Weekend off work, guys. So, coping stones, and we're going to get some fish back in. Keep watching. Right, so what I'm doing here guys is I'm just trying to mark out whereabouts I want my um, cappings and the spacings I want between them um, and how much overhang I want I don't want it too shallow of an overhang because in the future I might end up cladding this um, so I don't want to leave too little and then in future not be able to put any cladding on um, without the coping stones overhanging the cladding so I want to make sure I leave enough overhang at the minute there's about 40 mil on each end 40 mil on that and 40 mil at the front which leaves these spacings in between each one at about 15 millimeters so I mean it does look quite a lot when you look at it um, I mean, it's going to get filled with, with gobbo, but it's just these end bits here, what to do with them? I might end up having to put some um, tape or something underneath on each end, on this end and at the front here. Just put some underneath it and then fill the gaps in while it goes off just to hold it in place and see really what else I can do so I've I've eyed them up and then I've used a straight edge as well all the way up the full length of it to get them as straight as I can because the thing about these slabs is they've got ragged edges on them so you struggle to get a decent straight line by eyeballing it um, but you can see like sort of a straight edge so I've just had to go up it best I can with a uh, long length of wood just to try and get it as straight as can be so I'm going to get rest on them laid out and see where they're going to sit I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to end up cutting one or two around that skimmer, that could be a bit of a ball ache. Um, I'll get rest on them laid out and then when I get to that bit I'll tackle that as I go. Right so I've worked them ones out across there and them back ones I'm going to end up having to cut a couple of pieces to go either end just to make it symmetrical I think it leaves a gap for two pieces to go in either end at 180 each so we've got three 600s in the middle and then there'll be 180 each side and that'll make it look nice and symmetrical so that's what I'm going to do there I just need to get these ones down side now laid and work them out and work out whereabouts I need to cut for round skimmer just to make life a bit easier put a string line down there so I know then rather than struggling with a long bit of wood just use this string line and then I can butt the slabs right up to that string and then I know that they're all going to be in line with each other so I'm going to crack on with that and once I've done that, I'm going to get those two pieces cut and then I guess I'm going to have to start getting a mix on. No mixer this time though, so it's going to be back to the good old fashioned hand mixing again. Like I didn't have enough of that in the first place. Right, I'll get these laid down, get that intricate bit of skimmer cut out, get these two um, pieces cut and then we'll get cracked on getting these laid.
Gonna clean this up a bit. Beautiful. Now let's go and see if she fits. Right, look at this beaut. Not bad for a gas fitter. And then the front of it. Just sits nicely over the top of the skimmer face. And it'll all get sealed up properly once it's all gobbled up and that. Beautiful. So here we are now. All stones in position. The only thing I need to do now is these front ones, I just need to take a bit off the edges of those because they're sticking a bit too far over the window for my liking. So I'm going to take a bit off of each of those to bring them back not quite sure how much I'm going to bring them back by yet but I'll um, have a good think about that and um, cut them back to how I want them I'm pleased with how they've turned out to be honest with you especially that one there out skin me because I was dreading doing that I absolutely chuffed to bits with that once they're all laid and it's all gobbled up that look bang on Yep, it's coming on now. So I'm going to get these cut to width I want them. And then I'm going to get a mix on, which I'm not looking forward to. I don't like mixing, don't like gobbling. Not a fan at all. Three things I hate doing painting, digging, and gobbling. And I've done all three on this project. Right then. I guess I'll catch you back in a bit. And get these cut and get a mix on. Right. All mix ready to go guys. So we've got a four to one. Got the builder's bucket at hand. Got my shovel. Got my old pipe. So, I'm going to have a minute, because I know how draining this can be. I've been there plenty of times before, and I don't enjoy it. That's why I ended up borrowing a cement mixer in the first place. So, I'm going to have a quick smoke, and I'm going to get this all mixed up. Right, I'll catch you in a bit. Just gave me slabs on top now. Got me N2 on, that one and that one here. Just laid some gobble across here now. I'm gonna get these ones laid down. Right guys, just finished. Um, it's pretty late. I think it's about quarter past nine. Um, got slabs down all the way around pond. The only thing I haven't done yet is point up. But well, I think that, that'll be a job for tomorrow. Um, I'm happy how it's gone. It took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but never mind. Um, so, yes, point them up tomorrow and then we'll be ready for fish going in. So, the chlorinator went in the other day, so um, all chlorine's been removed out of the pond now. I checked it earlier. So, yeah, all ready to go for tomorrow. Catch you in a bit. See you tomorrow. Right, here we are, guys. On a wet, miserable Sunday morning. But well, now we've got a bit of daylight, we can have a look at what I got done last night. So we've now got all the cappings on. Like I say, just need to point up in between joints. Um, but until this weather changes a bit, supposed to be um, clearing up a bit after dinner time, so 
hopefully if it does I'll be able to get these joints pointed up still got a bit of cement left to get these pointed I've just checked them this gone off nice gone off nice and hard got slabs in down bottom there too so all being well I'll get them pointed up in a bit and also in a bit after dinner at some point we're going to get the remainder of the fishes back in the pond it's a shame I haven't got the rest of them I'm gutted about that really because they'd have gone really nice in here so right I'll catch you in a bit when I've either got this done or when it's time to put the fish in right I'm going to need to come up with a different plan of attack now for these because these joints are just too big to hold any um, gobbo in between them without falling through on ends I've tried putting tape underneath don't stick um, gaps just too big to put any OB1 or out like that underneath it um, so I'm going to need to try and think of something else to put underneath to hold it up while I fill these gaps in if you guys can make any suggestions then it'd be appreciated because I can't think of it off the top of my head so let me know down in the comments if you guys have had to do it similar to fill any similar size gaps so I think what I'll just do now is focus on getting my fish back getting some of this um, NT Labs filter bugs into my system and get these fish in now I think but I'll go and fetch them I'm going to bowl them up give them a scrape to see if we're dealing with any issues with parasites or anything like that and then we know where we stand going into um, I'm going into a new pond so I'll catch you guys when I have my fishes see you in a bit so where we have them guys the three little ones what do we have remaining yeah like I said real shame that I lost my other ones um, so they'd have gone lovely in here but this is what we've got left anyway so we've got a nice metallic Benny come on Ryu we've got a Kikasui that's lost quite a lot of its colour that because it did have a lot of orange on it and then we've got an ever so small Kinmatsuba that's the, that's the wife's fish that Kinmatsuba I'm just hoping that that Kikasui gets its colour back. Cause it hasn't half lost some. It has. These two, the Kikasui and the Komomiu, they're both um, the breeder of them is Kesa. And the Kimatsuba, I'm not sure, because we just bought that from a, just a small garden centre wife liked it so I bought it for her so yeah that's the fish that one the um, the Komomiu looks like it's got lipstick on can't really see it from this angle but if it turns around you might be able to see it can you see it? no can't really see it from this angle Anyway, I'm going to get these in guys because they've had, they've been sat here quite a while so I'm going to get them in and I'm going to get some filter bugs in. So that's it for the introduction of the fish and once they're in and I've got my filter bugs in, we'll see what they look like through window. Right, that's the fish in now guys, so it's time to add us filter bugs. So I've worked it out. I need about, I think it's 260 millilitres of this for the volume of my pond, so I've got my little measuring jug. So we've, we've got 260, okay. So, get this opened. I always put a cap on what you can't go into. A screwdriver through that, I think. There we go. 260 millilitres or thereabouts. Hello. So now, 
what's going to go into the bio chamber. I've turned my UV off to the drum. So now let's put this into the bio. I'm going to do it slow, it's nice and slow. Just put a bit in and get it mixed about. This water is cold. It's definitely not going to benefit from a great deal of bacteria this time of year. But well, I suppose it's better than nothing. So I'll get some in there. And like I say, this, this obviously this is a moving bed bio, but I've still not got my air pump yet. Oh, I need to pick that up at some point. Get the rest of that in. Hopefully that'll get matured in now. I did also scrape my fish as well before they went in. And I couldn't see anything on, at all on them, which I was quite surprised about. Now obviously, parasites this time of year when the water cools down like this, they do tend to slow down as well. So... Come springtime, could be a different story. Want to build a good amount of bacteria up in there now. And get, me, get an air pump picked up. And we're good to go. Only 50 litres of K1 in a minute. Don't need any more yet. Wait till probably wait till summertime when I've got more fish and can get some and this is matured a bit. Probably get a bit more K1 in. Right, that's in there now guys. Let's go and have a look at the fish. There's a the little baby. Coming to say hello. Fish has come to have a look. See there, look. His lipstick and his mouth. Right, that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Not much more I can say now. Fish are back in. Filter bugs are in. It's got to let it do its, do its thing now. So, I will catch you back on the next video. When's that going to be? I'm not too sure just yet. Now that I've got my system in and me and me fishing, I'm going to have a little rest because I've been on this non-stop finishing, from finishing work and um, weekend, so I'm going to have a bit, of a, a bit of a rest. But there's still plenty more to be done on this. Still loads yet. Um, example I need to get my drainage sorted for my filters and stuff like that my auto top up I've got to get that done so maybe I won't get so much of a rest <laughs> right that'll wrap this one up guys see you later <laughs>